here I go. <laughs> okay, so yeah, charge byte at a glance. So yeah, the charge byte it, it has it was originated from the I2C, which started in the in the late 90s, and the company was dedicated to power line communication um, and built some smart uh, smart home products, etc. So right now we are 30, yeah more than 80 employees all over the world, um, origin from Germany. Um, and we do we do um, controllers now for vehicles and charging stations. So we are on both sides of the cable, actually. So we have uh, yeah, we know everything <laughs> regarding the 1518 and the Dean and and all the, the power line communication, um, because it started then in, in back in 2012, so 2012, um, when the when the uh, the first OEM started their serious productions or serious products for, for electric vehicles. Um, they came up to that to, to, to the company and asked for hey you, you are you have knowledge in power line communication. Can you help us build a, a charge controller? And that was the that was the introduction into the whole um, electric mobility. So I'm I'm yeah I was also part of that in the, during that time, not not of I2SE but at BMW I joined there with BMW and built the vehicle side. So yeah. Um, is this? Yeah. So, what charge by now? We we developed a a, a proprietary um, a closed source software stack, um, and in when we when we saw the the, the approach from Pionix with the open source project at the it was 2022 already I think at the no at the power to drive. Power to drive in, in, in Munich. Um, yeah, ChargeByte and, and Pionix, they figured out that that's exactly how it should work. So we should do a open source, um, a open source, that, every, that all should be open source. It should be a, just a commodity stack. Um, and yeah, we donated our IP actually to what we have gained all since 2012 um, into that Everest project, the whole ISO and Dean software stack. Um, and yeah, uh, throw away the rest of it because we were not very proud of our OCPP implementation, to be honest. <laughs> uh, that's hard. It was we totally underestimated the OCPP part, to be honest. Uh, but that's uh, a very good source now in, in Everest. Um, last year, then we totally really switched over to to Everest. So we really uh, our old software stacks, uh, we, we our old Linux software stack, we totally. Yeah, put it into end of life. So our customers need also now to deal with that we will shift over to, to Everest, our our main our our legacy product. Um, all our operating system stuff and, and board support packages are also uh, on GitHub and open source. Um, we um, and, and now we also for the, the free yep the free resources development resources now. Um, we now put into additional management software for smartphones, energy, energy management software, all this upselling um, stuff. So, uh, we, as I also mentioned, we built these, these, we origin from a hardware, totally hardware dedicated company, more to a system integrated um, company. So, let me, here we go. That's just a small overview of, a pro of our products on the EVSE side. You see I highlighted some of them and some of them are not highlighted simply because they are not dedicated to Everest or Linux. So we have also a couple of, of products which are not Linux based, they are Artos based um, with, our, with a, a uh, closed source solution. Um, but as I highlighted here, so you see there is some, some um, products, I will, I will go quickly through them. So first of all, here's our charge control C. That's our that was um, uh, that was introduced 2018 um, into the market. It's a AC um, charge controller dedicated for AC and the European market. So it, it has all these kind of specialities for Europe that you have this detachable cable. So it's not attached. It's not tethered. It's you can remove it. So you need additional. Um, motor drivers, etc. So it's it's for that. It, it's it's a um, it's really a lean solution with a small processor and also with um, 
small uh, RAM and 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 uh, everything, so that the costs come down, right? It's a right. It, it comes with a lot of interfaces which you normally use or need in in terms of a charging station um, situation. Basically, you connect um, some peripherals like a meter, like some some uh, like a some contactors relays. And um, yeah, basically that's it. It comes also with some additional nice features. It has also power line on the on the mains, so you can also instead of utilizing Ethernet or some some something else for connectivity, you can use also power line as a connectivity option. Um, some of our customers use that. Um, so yeah, as I said, so there's the, the 2018. It's quite a mature product. Um, it's out there, and we will also tomorrow we will demonstrate some some Everest features uh, running or a complete plug and charge session um, with with Everest and one of our own charge controllers on the vehicle side. Um, yeah, so the next one is someone might have already already recognized that's a Phytech solution. So we teamed up also with Phytech together. Um, to have a uh, to have access to to a broad market because we are not we see us ourselves as a system integrator so whenever so customers come so hey I know how to build a charging station but I don't know how to build with the, all the software and electronics that's where ChargePy steps in you could say so we build charging stations without building charging stations so we build we help the customers really integrating. Um, their components to, to or, or our components and other components, the peripherals, to have everything together in one system. Um, yeah, we call it. We call it to have a little bit of differentiation. We call it Charge Duo in term, in term of uh, instead of Fiverzo. Um, Zach, Zach already explained a lot of it, so I, I do not need to to uh, make everything again. You see that it's basically the same hardware with our um, with with a Everest integration. Um, we offer we offer as I said, so that's that's the thing. We offer um, the whole support, the whole uh, integration into to make it a real charging station, right? So not the, the complete system, the complete everything around it. Um, then there is also a charge sum. Um, which is more, we could see it's a SECC on module. Um, that module comes with all really essential parts with what you need in a, for a SECC. Um, it's, it has all the, it, it does not utilize, it has not the all peripherals utilized. So you need a carrier board to, for example, if you want to have a CAN interface, you need that transceiver on your carrier board. The carrier board is also here, teamed up together with Phytech. Phytech, as an example, uh, knows everything perfect around these, this, uh, the, the interface, et cetera. So even it, it is designed together with Phytech. Um, so they build carrier boards or the, the, the interface itself is open. And also we have a lot of, of um, reference designs, et cetera, for everyone who can build that by yourself. Yeah, please. That has also display interface. It not two, not not for. It has one LVDS uh, interface. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also again, you need additional stuff on the carrier board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, so yeah, that's the carrier board as an example. So we build also together, uh, or we build a. a, a Together with Phytech, um, a carrier board um, as a first shot. So that's a evaluation board, or you can even use it. It would be industrial style, um, so it will be ready also for work in in, in charging stations. Um, but it's dedicated, or it's, as I said, it can be adapted for for AC, for DC, for whatever you like. So, um, yeah, and. Then we have, of course, software solutions, what we also need. So what we do is we integrate um, uh, charge by uh, the Pionix base camp. <laughs> we do integrate that into our, into our system as, a, as the core component and sell it as well to the support, uh, to the whole integration um, for customers who are, yeah, who need all that support, right? Um, and that's where we teamed up with, with Pionix as well. 
Um, because we think that partnering here in this huge, in this fast growing market, we see that all over the world that the market is really, really fast growing. Um, partnering is key. <laughs> so we really need to, to, to get together and, and uh, yeah. Yeah. So basically that's it. Um, any questions? That's software. So that's that's all. Vehicle grid is all software. Of course, there might be some additional um, things needed inside the charger, some additional peripherals for vehicle to, to support vehicle to grid. That's then part of what we do. We do we do support the customers, but that's our additional peripherals like a meter or like a a contactor or whatever. That depends on your on your topology. So if you're using a DC charging station, the conversion happens in the in the in the charging station. If you have an AC charging station, the conversion needs to be on board on, in the onboard charger. So, but that's that's for, of course that that's a different it's a different setup of your charger. Of course, an AC or DC charger. Um, already here, we integrated a lot of these um, in, of the um, AC and DC inverters for for already with our old um, software stack. Now there comes the next generation for Everest, so that will be the, most of them they are controlled by a CAN, for example, and then you just integrate it into, the, into your setup. Well, ready for beer, I guess? <laughs> and thanks for your attention.